Hey guys, listen up because today we're diving into an amazing world and let me tell you, it's going to be wild. We're talking about lots of battles, cool battles and beautiful girls. We're also going to talk about a super archer who shoots arrows faster than my aunt at a Black Friday sale. And it looks like he's playing Cupid because he's hitting all the girls in the heart. And at the center of that world is our main man, Tiger Wormwood Warren. Or, as I like to call him, Tiger. Yes, that's right. This man has a name like he's about to release the hottest rap album of the year. Tiger is no ordinary guy off the street. No, this guy is the Lord of Alsace, and he has the kind of bow and arrow that would make Robin Hood seem like a game of Nerf guns. When Tiger draws the bowstring, you can be sure he'll hit the target. He always hits the target if he doesn't have a bow and there's a beauty in front of him. This guy will win her over with one look. So, the show begins, and Tiger goes into battle with Chid's army. But even though the battlefield has turned into a lively game of duck hunt, his soldiers are wounded, and he falls into the hands of Eleanor Vilteria. And Eleanor let me tell you, is one of the seven vanities, and it's best not to mess with her. But our hero already knew that. He attacked Eleanor's squad, thinking he could destroy her and win the battle. But as they say, no such luck. After a failed attack, she doesn't order his head cut off, much to the surprise of her servants. Though he misses the arrow, it hits her heart. She fell in love with him for she saw at once that he was a marvelous man. She decided to take him captive, and to eventually win his heart too, for all the servants. She arranged a demonstration of his strength, so that no one would doubt her decision and his usefulness in the army. He was given a tainted bow, but he was able to show his mettle. He shot from a great distance the assassin who made the attempt on Eleanor's life. After that, he began to train the archers of her army and earned great respect among them. I will reveal to you in detail who our Tiger Wormud Vorn is. Tigri is a valiant and just righteous man who will fight to defend Alsace from any enemy threats, more out of filial responsibility and love for his people than out of loyalty to the crown. Unlike other aristocrats and nobles of Brune, Tiger leads a modest and frugal life and treats his people with the respect and favor they deserve. His love for Alsace is so strong that he is willing to defend it at all costs and even risk his own life. While he was in captivity, another nobleman decided to destroy his home. Tiger could not stand it. He wanted to go alone to defend his people but he was no longer alone. Eleanor decided to help him in exchange for his love, but his lands were now hers. How sweet. When a girl says she'll pay your taxes for you, but then you and your apartment are now hers. So how did it go down? I'll tell you. Thanks to Masha's warning, almost everyone in Alsace began evacuating Alsace. The able-bodied fled to the nearest desert and the vulnerable sought refuge in the nearest shrine. Of all the inhabitants of Alsace, only Tida remained at Vorn Manor, awaiting Tigri's return. Unfortunately, Zion's vast forces stopped the evacuation and descended upon Alsac, looting, vandalizing, and even killing anyone who tried to escape. Despite the horrific destruction, Sion remained unsatisfied until he saw the Vorn estate from afar, planning to visit it before burning it to the ground. Fortunately, Tigre and Leomritz's army arrived in Alsace just in time. The Count launched an arrow into the palm of Sion's hand, causing Tita to escape Sion's clutches and leap from the balcony into the arms of Tigre, who was saved by Helene's wind for a safe landing. With the appearance of Tigre and his new ally, Eleanor Vilteria, and the army of Zakted, Terardier's army began to panic and was forced to retreat from Alsace, losing 300 men in the process. 
As Halim decided to confront Sion and his remaining 2,700 troops on the plains of Malsha, she decided to send her 100 men to the defense of Alsace. Over time, Tiger begins to collect Vanitas like Pokemon cards. He learns their secrets, discovers the power of his black bow, and basically shows everyone that he's not just a pretty face with a bow. He has courage. He has spirit and a sense of justice that is stronger than my grandmother's grip on the family recipes she passed down. Now let's talk about this black onion. This is not your average run of the mill, store, bought onion. No, this thing is like the Excalibur of archery. It reacts to these vanities, charges up, and turns the tiger into a one-man army. But as we know, with great power comes great responsibility. And Tiger isn't just trying to score a lot of points. He has a mission. He wants peace. He wants prosperity, and he's ready to put an arrow through the heart of anyone who gets in his way. But he does it with style, grace, and a heart that just won't give up. And by the end of the series, Tiger becomes more than just a hometown hero. No, he returns as a legend, a symbol of hope and strength, showing everyone that even in the darkest times there is light at the end of the tunnel, and that light can only be the glare from his bow. Let's not forget the Vanadies. These ladies are like Beyonce on the battlefield. Beautiful, strong, not to be trifled with. And for some reason, they all just fall down in front of Tiger. I get it, he's got skills. But he also has heart. And he's playing the role of peacemaker between these warrior queens, like he's trying to win the Nobel Peace Prize. Ladies and gentlemen, Tigro Vermut Vaughan, a name so complicated I had to repeat it five times before. I said it is a testament to the power of determination justice, and very, very good archery skills. So the next time you feel overwhelmed, just remember, be like Tiger. Take your life by the bowstring, take aim and shoot. I have to tell you about this epic story. We have warriors, we have drama, and we have a love story more complicated than the season finale of The Bachelor. Let's dive into it. First, we have Elena, Vanitas of Laetmeritz. This woman is a warrior queen, I tell you. She is fierce, fearless, and has a heart of gold. On the battlefield, she meets this fellow, Tiger. Tiger can shoot an archery bow so good he could give Robin Hood a head start. Ellen sees this and says, I can't kill this guy. I have to make him my prisoner of war. Yes. You heard right. She spares his life because he's good with a bow and arrow, but not only because of that, but also because he has courage. Tiger now owes Helen his life, and he's willing to fight for her, protect her, anything. And Helen has Tiger's back, too. They fight, they win wars, they are basically the Jay-Z and Beyonce of the medieval world. But, let's be honest, there is some tension between them. I'm not talking about battlefield tension, but romantic tension. These two have feelings for each other, but they dance around it like it's prom night. Now let's talk about Myla, Vanitas from Olmutz. She's Ellen's rival, but not just a rival, a long-time rival. They're feuding, like the Hatfields and the McCoys. But then Tiger appears with his archery skills and charm, and Mila suddenly rethinks her life choices. She begins to respect Tiger, and before you know it, she's already giving him advice on archery and life, commanding him like a girl captain. But mostly, she's teaching him manners. And then we have Sophie, Zikted's mediator in Vanadis. She, like Oprah in the story, brings wisdom and peace wherever she goes. She meets Tiger in, shall we say, a very memorable way, and they bond. Tiger is saving people left and right, and Sophie feels it. She falls in love with him and isn't afraid to show it. 
Now, Lisa, Vanitas from Libus. She has had her eye on Tiger from the beginning. She sees his potential, sees his abilities and thinks this guy, he's going to be at the top of his game. And when Tiger loses his memory, who comes to his rescue? Lisa, that's who. She's fallen in love with him and won't let him forget it. But there's another Vanities. The Vanities of Osterode. Valentina is a mysterious Vanities whose motives are unpredictable even to her brethren, though they have not met each other physically. Tigrer was once visited by Valentina, who entered his bedroom in the fortress of Perche out of curiosity. Unbeknownst to Tigger himself, Tina suggested that King Victor send Tigra to Osvar to settle the civil war. She actually wanted to meet with Tigra alone, but Sasha's warning made her reconsider her plans, mainly because of Tigra's extensive relationship with almost all Vanitas except herself. And finally, we have Liam, Countess of Alsace. She is skeptical of Tigre at first, but he wins her over with his bravery and skill with a bow so also sees his noble motives and how she treats Eleanor. She has feelings for him, but remains calm. That's it, friends. Tiger has women falling in love with him left and right, waging wars, saving lives and breaking hearts. He's like the James Bond of the medieval world, if James Bond had a bow and arrow instead of a gun. There is drama, action, and romance in this story. It's like Game of Thrones and The Bachelor, and I'm all for it. Let's keep the party going and talk more about our goddesses of war. Because today, we're diving into the world of war. And we have a front row ticket to the Eleanor Viltaria show. I know some of you may be thinking, who is Eleanor Viltaria? Well, fasten your seatbelts, because you're in for an exciting ride. Eleanor, or Ellen for short, is the kind of woman you notice when she walks into a room. She has waist-length silver hair that is better than my pickup lines at the club, and crimson eyes that see right through your soul. Let's not forget the figure, friends. She has a gorgeous body with curves in all the right places, and I mean all the right places, but Ellen isn't just a pretty face. No, she's one of the seven Vanadies, which is basically the same as being a member of the Avengers. But in a medieval fantasy world, she has strength, she has power, and she knows how to wield a weapon. And I'm not just talking about her charm, folks. I'm talking about her Vandis, her magical weapon that turns her into a one-man army on the battlefield. Now let's talk about her style, because this woman knows how to dress. On the battlefield, she wears blue light armor with red, and purple skirts and looks like she just stepped off a Milan fashion show. But when she's not kicking ass and taking charge, she's either in her regal uniform or her usual girly clothes, proving that she can fight both on and off the battlefield. But this is where the plot twist comes in. Tigra Vermood Warn, or Tiger as we like to call him, and he calls himself. This guy becomes Ellen's prisoner after the battle, but instead of sending him to the gallows, she sees something in him. Since he single-handedly attacked her squad, what a lunatic! She sees potential in him. And when Ellen sees potential, she grabs him by the horns. So Ellen and Tiger start spending time together. And before you know it, they become not only allies on the battlefield, but friends. And that, my friends, is where the magic happens. Ellen has the ability to believe in people, to inspire them to reach heights they never knew they could. She sees the potential in Tiger and helps him realize it, turning him into the hero he was always meant to be. But it's not all rainbows and sunshine for Ellen. We shouldn't forget about the other vanities. These women have their own goals and ambitions, and they don't always keep up with the times. But Ellen is not afraid to stand her ground. She is not afraid to speak her mind. And if cooperating with other vanities is beneficial to her lands and her people, rest assured she will go along with it. So in the end, 
Ellen is not just a warrior. She is not just a ruler. She is a beacon of strength, courage, and faith in others. She is living proof that true strength lies not in physical might, but in resilience and faith in others. Now we have our main character, Tigri, and our fierce warrior queen, Ellen. These two have been through battles, seen things, but nothing will prepare them for what's about to happen. So, they just won an epic victory, right? But wait, it doesn't end there. Because the enemy is very powerful and cunning. He's sending another army to defeat Tiger and Ellen's alliance. And it's not just warriors. It's knights, the most powerful weapon in the kingdom. And with them is a great warrior who hasn't known defeat since he was 13. Can you believe it? This guy sure knows his way around a street fight. He carries a magic Durandal sword, which is no weaker than Vanity's weapon. And so the knight and Vanadice fight. He turns out to be very strong. And the beautiful girls thought they were going to lose. But then our hero arrives, who has recently gained even more power. With one shot, he brings the knight to his knees. And in that moment, the strongest knight in the kingdom realizes that he may have been mistaken and maybe Tyrg isn't the traitor. He sees Tiger Vorn protecting the people and wanting peace. He decides to help him and gives him his sword, and he goes to the kingdom to help the king sort things out. But the story doesn't end there either, because the main villain Aaron Thenardier is still alive. He wants to destroy Tiger by any means necessary. He gathers a huge army and attacks Tiger's army. But our guy's not a bad guy. He doesn't want more casualties. He challenges Aaron to a duel and says, I'll end it all with one arrow. And who'd have thought it? He does. Right on the first shot, right through the head, the main battle is won. And Ellen is very happy to be by Tiger's side at that moment. She's always believed in him and helped him and given it her all. And here's the cherry on top, friends. After all the battles and drama, Helene confesses her love to Tiger, and he reciprocates. Ladies and gentlemen, Eleanor Viltaria is the kind of woman we all need in our lives. She is the hero we all aspire to be. And if you take one thing out of all of this, let it be this. Believe in yourself believe in others, and never, ever underestimate the power of a woman with a magic weapon and an awesome silver hairdo. Do you like ice cream? If so, this story is for you. I have to tell you about one girl, Ludmila Lori, or Myla for short. She is one of the seven vanities in this crazy world. This girl is has her own territory, Olmutz, and she wields such magical weapons it's like Harry Potter meets Wonder Woman. You can tell right away that Myla is not acting. She's as serious as a heart attack and colder than my ex-wife's gaze. She's so unwavering, it's like she's made of ice. And may I say disobedience? Not in her vocabulary. She wants her employees to stand in line like kids in the school cafeteria. But don't be intimidated, folks. Myla, she's tough, but she has a heart, especially when it comes to her people. She protects her territory like a mama bear protects her cubs. She won't let anyone mess with her people. And here's Tigra Vermood Vorin. That's not a bad name, is it? Sounds like what you say when you sneeze. Anyway, this guy's being introduced to Myla. Helene and Ludmilla are old rivals. They've always been rivals in everything. Ludmilla doesn't like Helene because she is cranky and doesn't know how to behave. Myla has a magic weapon, Lavatina. And when she is on the battlefield, she acts with terrible power. She swings that thing around like Beyonce on tour. She's defending her land, defending her people. She's saying you can't do this with my power. And, and 
it gets to the bone. I mean, she's the queen of frost. Her favorite spell is to throw ice balls at her enemies. But the beginning of this story was very hot. First, Ludmilla helped her enemies by going up against the allied forces of Tiger and Ellen, but she did not do this of her own free will. Her family served the king and she didn't want to break her oath. Ellen and Tiger came to her domain and wanted to take the fortress, but it was as impregnable as her mistress. But Tiger went on the sly. He met Myla separately, though she did not know it was Tiger. Myla told him that she did not want to fight because she thought it was unfair. Tiger and his army made a secret passage to Myla's castle and then broke through the very strong gate with his super arrow. After that, Mila became neutral. Later, she became Tiger's ally. After all, she appreciated him as a master bowman and a noble man. When Helene left on an urgent business trip, it was Ludmila who helped Tiger in a very important battle. Together, they defeated a superior enemy. Together, they defeated the enemy army and saved many hostages. Although Ludmila and Helene are rivals, but thanks to Tigri, they became closer to each other. True, Helene still makes fun of Mila for her small stature, but that doesn't stop them from defeating enemies together. It was especially great when they won together working as a team and trusting each other. It wasn't just an army against them. They defeated two mighty dragons. Imagine two huge dragons. The power of wind and the power of frost were very effective against them. But Myla was at her best in this battle. She forgot old grudges. And she helped Ellen in her time of need when she was wounded by the dragon's flames. Ellen was very grateful to Myla for healing her wounds. But that's not all. Myla is not just a warrior. She has feelings, emotions, the whole package. She respects strength, valor, and as the plot progresses, she begins to warm to Tigra. She says, okay, maybe this guy isn't just an archer. Maybe he's got something special. And let's not forget that Myla has her own code a code of honor. She believes in justice, righteousness, like a superhero without a cape. She is not afraid of a challenge and is always ready to fight for what is right. So, Ludmila Luri is one of the strongest and toughest characters in this world. She tells us about self-sacrifice, strength, and standing up for what she believes in. She shows us that even in a harsh, cruel world, it is possible to stay true to yourself and protect those in need. Myla is not just vanities. She is a hero, a warrior who has left a mark on the audience's soul that will not disappear anytime soon. So here's to Myla, the Ice Queen with a heart of gold? Let's talk about Limelish, or Liam for short. This girl is tall, blonde, and has curves in places that some people can't even pronounce, okay? She has a closet that the Kardashians would envy, and a ponytail that is practically its own character. First of all, let's deal with the elephant in the room. Yes, Liam has big breasts, and yes, she is the subject of teasing. What's more, with Elena and Myla in the room, the jokes are just so on point. But Liam takes it all in stride because she has that composure. She's wearing a short, tight blue top and skirt, and she always looks chick. But when it's time to fight, Liam doesn't play around. She's wearing light blue heavy armor. In the manga, she's wearing white heavy armor with an open belly. Who knew combat gear could be so varied? And when she becomes Vanitas of Legnica? Oh! That's a whole new closet, baby. Black light armor, purple bra, open belly, white shorts, double purple belt. This girl has more outfit changes than a Beyonce concert. Now let's talk about Liam's job. She is one of Ellen's trusted bodyguards, and she takes her job seriously. In combat, 
Liam is as strict as a librarian before closing time. She believes in skill discipline and probably has a manual at home on how to be a warrior. But here's the rub. Liam has a soft side. She melts when she sees something cute or is shy around boys. And let's not even talk about her obsession with teddy bears. She has the kind of collection that would make toys are us uncomfortable. Tigri and Ellen know this and take advantage of it. Oh, are you going to lecture us, Lim? But look at that cute teddy bear. Lecture delivered. Mission accomplished. Despite her collection of teddy toys, Liam is the voice of reason on the team. She is calm, rational, and has a strategic mindset that could give Sun Tzu a head start. She's Eleanor's perfect advisor and assistant, and in critical situations, she's colder than the other side of the pillow. But don't think Liam can fight with the best of them. She wields a sword, knows how to use it, and isn't afraid to get her hands dirty. Her bravery and fighting skills inspire everyone around her, proving that she's a valuable member of the team. And when it comes to Tiger, the most important person, Liam goes from distrustful to one of their most trusted allies. She becomes the liaison between the Lady Warriors and Tiger's world helping them understand each other and work together. She fell in love with him when Tinner saved her from death. After that incident, she trusts him 100%. Liam is a symbol of strength, intelligence, and loyalty. She proves that women can be just as strong as men, and that true strength lies in being true to your beliefs and protecting those you love. So, here's to Lim, the tall blonde warrior who can show off her battle attire and teddy bear collection like no other, proving that you can be fierce, fabulous, and a uh, teddy bear lover at the same time. Well, it's sweet time because we need to talk about this character, Sophie. This isn't just any ordinary character, no. This is Sophia Obertos, one of the seven Vanadies a warrior queen if you've ever seen one. But she doesn't just swing a sword and shoot arrows. Oh, no. She has style and grace and curves in all the right places. And she's a powerful sorceress. Very cool. Way better than Hermione from Harry Potter. We're talking about a woman with golden blonde hair that curls faster than a roller coaster. Legs for days and a figure that makes everyone in the room do a double take. She's wearing a pale green and white dress, and I swear it's like the designer was playing a game of how low can you go with that neckline. And here's Sophie. She's got that whole noble lady feel about her. She's got hair and eyes and a closet that screams, I'm royalty, but I can kick your ass if I have to. Not to be overlooked is her weapon of choice, a magic staff. That's right, magic stuff she knows. She fights like she's in a medieval version of a superhero movie. But what really sets Sophie apart is her character. She's kind, empathetic, and wise beyond her years. She is like Mother Teresa and Wonder Woman having a baby. She resolves conflicts supports her friends, and does it with a smile on her face. And let's talk about her relationships. Sophie doesn't just fight alongside the main characters. She builds relationships, creates bonds, and is that wise big sister everyone dreams of. She has a special bond with the main character. Tiger, that shows him that strength doesn't always come from the muzzle of a gun, or, in this case, from a bow. Sophie, like Vanitas, doesn't just fight and make friends. She has responsibilities, people to take care of, and lands to rule. And she does all of this with the kind of dedication that inspires everyone around her to do new things. In this way, Sophie is more than just an anime character. She is a force to be reckoned with. She has the strength of a warrior, 
the grace of a queen, and the heart of a saint. She proves that you can be a badass warrior on the battlefield and a compassionate leader off of it. And that, my friends, is why Sophie from Mata no Yudu Vanitas is not just a character, but a damn good role model. Thank you, my favorite friends, for always listening to my retellings to the end and many times over. I'm very grateful for your support. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you already have all the